At one point on YouTube, Idubs was one of the most feared content creators due to the success and major impact of his content cops on other YouTubers. Ian was considered untouchable for several years, until he himself pulled the plug on his channel. There are many ways for a person to kill their own YouTube channels. Inactivity, dropping the quality of the content, drama, criminal accusations, the list goes on. In this video, I will explore how Idubs killed his channel and transitioned from being one of the most subscribed and beloved commentary channels to now one of the most hated. The fall of Idubs' career began began all the way back in 2020 when his wife Anissa announced she had created an OnlyFans account. This led to Ian receiving backlash from his fans as they all viewed him as a simp and a cuck. The amount of backlash Ian received forced him to address the situation in a video as well as explain his opinions on sex workers. The whole video was essentially Ian defending his wife and combating people's criticisms with decent responses. However, Ian worsened the situation by singling out one of his angry fans on Twitter and mocking him for liking his content. Like if you don't want to look up to me anymore, that's fine. I don't want you to look up to me. First up, we got Edward. He probably got told by a lot of people that he looks like Idubs, and he really liked that because Idubs was cool. Edward, I don't know where you got the idea that I was cool. Do you think it was cool when I was running around in an oversized cop outfit? That was cool to you. By mocking one fan for enjoying his content, he fundamentally mocked his entire audience. This was the first time in Idub's career where he heavily bled subscribers. If you are upset by me admitting this, then uh, I suggest you go idolize someone else. Someone who isn't a simp or a cuck. Three years later, Ian appeared on Anthony Padilla's channel for an interview. In a segment of the video, Ian discussed the reason for changing the style of his content, that reason being because of his interactions with fans, describing them as antisocial basement dwellers. Another thing that ended up um, kind of guiding the path a little bit, I did not like the interactions that I had with fans. There were quite a few human beings that I interacted with. In person? That, yeah, in person, that just sucked. Ooh. They just sucked because I attracted a lot of people who sucked. Some people were, as I described earlier, were very much like antisocial, weird basement dwellers. And you know, the one time a month that they come out of their cave is going to restock on supplies at Walmart and they run into me, their favorite YouTuber. Which is kind of the lifestyle you were living at the yeah, time. Exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't blame them. And what would they say? What would they do? Things that I am certainly not going to repeat. <laughs> so I'm talking bad words, fringy behavior that like maybe I'd do in a video because I, I got a camera pointed at me. There'd be some of that energy matched in person and it's like, oh, maybe not. Ian further received backlash for these comments as he once again mocked his fans. What makes no sense about these statements from Ian is, what did he fucking expect? By creating edgy content, you'll naturally attract an edgy audience. And when a fan sees you in public and says edgy things to you, it's because they believe they're matching your humor, as that's how you've portrayed yourself on YouTube. Furthermore, Ian would continue damaging his career after his drama with Froggy Fresh. In April 2023, Ian held his second boxing charity event where he fought Alex Wasabi. A month before before the event, someone initially fighting on the card was mysteriously kicked, that being Froggy Fresh. A month after the event, Idubs finally explained why he had kicked Froggy from the card, the main reason being his collaboration with Sam Hyde, someone Ian had personal issues with. The main reason Froggy was kicked from the card was for collaborating with Sam Hyde. And, you know, for anyone who's been following the story, that's, you know, fairly obvious. Uh, Froggy has explained, uh, you know, his side of the story multiple times. And uh, unfortunately, he's been perpetuating a narrative that it's about OnlyFans or that it's about Anissa's mom. And it, that's extremely deceptive because he knows why he was kicked from the card. The one indication I gave him was Sam Hyde, and I, I wasn't unclear about that. Anyone who's mentioning the fact that Harley trained with Sam Hyde for the year previous, uh, that was before Sam was saying this about my wife. I don't think so, Anissa. Anissa, what an ugly piece of shit. But look how, look how beat she is. Oh, nice jack o' lantern teeth. That's like a I can't wait to see what she looks like when she's 32. Her teeth look like a, like a pumpkin head. Like so, yeah, now that this guy is on the daily insulting my wife, I think it's pretty fair to, you know, not want to associate with him in any way. If you look at my text exchange with Froggy, it's very clear that I didn't want to kick him from the card. I got to the point where I was like, okay, I don't want you working or training with Sam Hyde, but you're doing that, so all right, I'll look past it. I don't want you making content with Sam Hyde, but seems like that's a real deal breaker for you, so 
I guess I'll look past it. It came to the point where I was like, can you postpone releasing content with Sam Hyde? This video caused Ian to receive the most backlash he's ever had due to his initial reason for kicking Froggy being so ludicrous. Ian failed to explain in this video what his actual problem was with Froggy collaborating with Sam Hyde, because Froggy had nothing to do with Sam's comments on Ian or Anissa. Ian even made poor critiques of Sam's character. Sam Hyde, Froggy's hero, calls Nathan a rapist like several times. That Nathan Barnett guy, I guarantee you that guy would rape somebody if he had if he had the opportunity. Yeah, legally he would rape somebody in Minecraft, by the way. In, in Minecraft. Minecraft. Yes. <laughs> he he if he had the chance to rape a woman, he would. In Minecraft. In Minecraft. <laughs> no, not in no, not in Minecraft, Kim. I don't want anything to do with Sam. I don't want anything to do with people that think what Sam is doing is okay. It is not okay. It's crucial to note that Sam is a comedian and his comments about Nathan Barnett were clearly just jokes and not genuine like Ian thinks. Remember, what makes you laugh is subjective. Finally, Ian's next upload after this controversy was his channel's final nail in the coffin. In this video, Ian revealed how he had regretted making his past content, specifically content cop videos, describing them as lackluster and cruel. I am responsible for creating a lot of hurtful and damaging content on this channel. And I've also created a culture of uh, apathy and, I don't know, a lot of like cruelty as well. Like, you know, some of the videos I've made have been very, not edgy. I don't think they, they you know, some of these videos were edgy. I think they were just outright cruel. The content I'm talking about specifically are content cop videos and videos where I was uh, just generally criticizing people for very lackluster reasons and, uh, you know, obviously didn't have any accountability online whatsoever on my end. Ian then added how he had unlisted all the videos and went as far as to apologize to the people he made content cops on. I'm sorry to everyone that I made content cop videos on. I, I still don't like the majority of you, and that's fine, but I can recognize that you did not deserve the hate and harassment that I sent your way. The response to this video from audiences was very divided. Half of the audience supported Ian and his decisions, while the other half disagreed with his personal views on the content he used to make. There are some people who fully deserve the content cops they got. Ian treats his past as if he were a former clansman. Content cop was great, not because I ever thought you were some moral hero, but because at least somebody was calling those guys on their crap. Content Cop was great and will be missed. Ian was even invited to come on Colossal's Crazy's podcast to debate, as Colossal heavily disagreed with Ian's views on his Content Cops. Ian would respond by tweeting, I welcome opinions about my apology from people and communities whom the apologies were directed at. That is where my care starts and ends. However, Ian would then contradict this statement by going on a random podcast that was way smaller and less relevant than Colossal's To Be Honest podcast. So Ian will happily join a podcast with hosts that agree with his views in instead of going onto ones where his opinions will be challenged. Fast forward to November 2023, Max Mofo announced on Twitter they had gotten married. What people noticed in the photos he posted was the absence of Ian at the wedding. On a live stream, Ian was asked why he was absent from the wedding, to which he explained he was simply too busy. Yeah, I talked to Max about the the wedding situation. I, when he was first fucking sending out invites, I was like really uncertain of how that was going to work out because I had some uh, kind of important plans here in the States. So we uh, we went a month earlier to kind of, you know, give him and Kat our well wishes. Um, that's why I was in Australia. And it's kind of also why we didn't do cold ones is because he was ramping up for his wedding stuff. Around the time Max was getting married, Anissa was getting a back tattoo. This knowledge led people to speculate on Twitter that Ian missed Max's wedding because of that reason. He says really important stuff in the States. Does he really say it was for the back tattoo? What else could it possibly be? It's not so important that he can't do weekly uploads, podcast episodes and streams, but it does mean that they can't leave the country. The tattoo was being done in the same time frame. Ergo, it was probably the tattoo. Although in fairness, this was not confirmed to be the actual reason and it's just a speculation. One year later, Ian would appear on Max and Chad's Cold Ones channel, testing vintage kitchen gadgets. If we look at the like to dislike ratio, the video received 65,000 likes but 25,000 dislikes likes, something very bizarre for the Cold Ones channel to receive. However, if we look at the comments to this video, we can easily find the answer to why. You guys are lucky he could fit you in between his wife's tattoo appointments. Raising a Cold One to the editing team on this one. Anytime the camera was on Ian, he was as vibrant as
and full of life as an autopsy on a bloated corpse. Only one guy was missing for the whole gang to be reunited again. Well, actually two, because Ian wasn't there. I was just a robot with Ian's skin. Ian acknowledged these comments on his and Anissa's podcast. Ian made the point that what he said on Anthony Padilla's channel last year, speaking about his fans, was poorly communicated, and that he did not mean that all of his fans were so-called basement dwellers. Only the ones who would say slurs to him in public. To be honest, it's just like, in in my mind, it's just like a like really bad communication on my part. Uh, because I started like um, doing things that I would say are like uh, out of character for me. Like me just going on the Anthony Padilla podcast. There was a line in there that sounded like really harsh. And it was like, um, yeah, when the basement dwelling person like comes out and sees their favorite YouTuber, or they say a slur or something. Because you were specifically talking about the the fans that had come up to you and said a slur to you in public. Yeah. That's who you're specifically yeah. talking about. So when you say, I am I was attracting basement dwellers, mm -hmm. it makes a blanket statement, statement. that everyone who mm -hmm. watches your stuff is a blanket or is a, is a basement dweller rather than you are attracting a lot of people, mm -hmm. but with some of the stuff that you were doing, especially right. because there was satire and, there, and other things, you were also beaconing out mm -hmm. to the basement dweller who comes out of their room once every month. But Ian, there is always going to be bad people watching your content, and it's not your fault that they're watching, it's what happens when you have a large audience. So this argument being one of the reasons he changed his content makes no sense. So what caused Ian to become one of the most hated commentary channels on YouTube? Well, personally, I think it was because he betrayed his audience. For several years, Ian has cultivated the image of an edgy YouTuber, which naturally attracted an edgy audience. And it's perfectly fine if Ian no longer enjoys creating his older style of content and wants to move on. The issue lies in how he patronizes his fans for liking his old videos. And for anyone who liked those videos, I, I you know, I want this video to be uh, an example and a lesson for you. You know, you can like content, but you can also think that it, it's irresponsible and it's hurting other people. So it just tap into that part of your brain that's saying like, oh, okay, it's like, it's probably not that important that this video stays online because truthfully, uh, I've seen it, I've experienced the content, but it's done a lot of damage. We, we can just let it, we can let it go. Now there is nothing wrong with edgy content. It's fine to hold a personal opinion that edgy content is unfunny and immature, but remember, entertainment and comedy are subjective. I think Moist Critical perfectly sums up the opinions of myself and everyone who disagreed with Ian's take. But I don't think it was a mistake that he made those videos. Like, they're not hurtful, nor do I really think they're damaging. Now, you could make an argument that they were hurtful to the people they were about, like the content cop on Tana or Leafy or any of that. You could say, like, you know, he hurt their feelings or sent harassment their way, which may have been a mental burden on them, and you could feel bad about that, I suppose. But at the end of the day, I don't think the goal of his content was ever to be hurtful or damaging. He was just trying to entertain and using edginess as shock humor, which, for its time was acceptable online. Now, whether or not you think that's okay that it was ever acceptable, that's a different argument for a different day. But the point is, the point of his content wasn't to be hateful or hurtful. He really was just trying to entertain. At least that's how I and the majority of people viewed it. 